What's going on everybody, Senor Spicy here, back with another Pirate 101 video for you guys today. Alright, it's time. I'm very excited to bring to you guys my long-awaited, updated gear guide for every single class on Pirate 101. Uh, if you don't know, about two and a half years ago I made a, a video called My Gear and Builds for Every Class in Pirate 101. Till this day, it's um, my most viewed video on YouTube. And it's really the video that made me want to keep doing pirate content and streaming and um, being just a pirate 101 content creator. So, um, but it has been two and a half years since that video has come out. And although there hasn't been a crazy amount of updates uh, in that time span, there has been some, and there has definitely been some that have um, changed either specific pieces of gear for for my classes. Uh, or the build in general. So I'm definitely going to be uh, going over what has changed, um, the gear that I've changed, and gears that stay the same. Uh, now, if you if you notice, uh, the time for this video is quite long, just like the previous one. I'm sorry, it's just it, it is that way. I have to speak as much as I can about all the classes. Um, however, if you go into the description, I have left timestamps for every single class. So if you want to just skip on. On ahead to uh, whatever class you like to play and see the builds and gear uh, go right ahead they will be right in the description below as well as uh, my links to uh, all my socials so definitely go check those out as well and before I I get into this I want to just say um, thank you guys so much for 1.5 K subscribers on YouTube uh, it really means a lot to me thank you thank you uh, I never thought that I'd have that many for making content for, for Pyro 101 um, and I'd also like to thank you guys for 1.4k um, followers on Twitch much appreciated guys I really do love all y'all and um, the nice comments over the years and just the support and yeah I really do appreciate it so um, but anyway enough of that sappy stuff let's get right into uh, Musketeer so before I start um, <laughs> I just said let's get right into Musketeer and I was like before I start um, I have to, uh, I have to say that this is for PVE. Do not flame me, um, because you play PVP. This is for PV PVE only. So, um, every single piece of gear, every every build that I have for these classes is for PVE. That's what I enjoy playing. I like to, f I like to do bosses. I like the farm. I like the quests. So it's all for PVE, um, and they are for level 70. So all the all these are these are for max level characters. Um, but some of these gear, some of this gear, you can farm earlier on, as you'll see. And um, yeah, all right. So I'm gonna show you guys the gear for each class, and then at the end of it, I'll show you guys my powers list and how I order them. Talk about the pets, talk about the builds, and yeah. So let's get right into Musketeer. So Musketeer is probably gonna be the longest one because I actually have three different builds for Musketeer. This is why I love Musketeer so much, is because you can switch between builds. This is why I love Musket. Um, you can switch between builds without having to reset your training points, which is nice. So the first build I'm going to go over is Pure Shooty. Pure Shooty Overwatch 5. This is the first build that I use. Um, it requires you to use Dark Mort Death Spinner, and that's something you're going to notice throughout the video, is that a lot of builds are based around the weapon you use and um, the gear uh, and epics associated with that build, as well as your pet. Um, so, um, the quarterback of this build is Dark More Despiter. You get this from the Ashes of the Armada pack. It gives you Overwatch, which allows you to have Overwatch 5 uh, in tandem with the other um, piece of gear and pet. 4 range, which is a little bit sad. It's not 5 range, but Overwatch 5 is worth it if you do not know what Overwatch 5 does. Um, Overwatch 3. Um, if, if it hits somebody, it will decrease their accuracy by half. And Overwatch 5 will actually knock them back. So basically, you'll be untouchable. And so that's why it's really good. It just It's a great layer of safety. And um, just like Repel Borders 5 and Ready Spell 5, it'll knock them back, and it's great. Um, so that is the weapon that I use. Um, let's go right into the hat. So the hat that I use is the Santa Rana hat. It requires... This is required for the Overwatch 5 build. Um, all it gives is Overwatch, and with a pet that has Overwatch, you will have Overwatch 5, which is great. So, 
Um, if you don't want to do Overwatch 5, but you still want to do Pure Shooty, I'll go over some uh, other options. Um, you can use any of the Champion Rifles, they're all pretty good. Um, doesn't have to be specifically Spring. If you do PvP and you want to use um, the Champion Rifles, all of those are pretty good. Uh, the... not that one. Where is the Thunder Rifle? Somewhere. I have it somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, the Thunder Rifle as well from the first Dreadnought that spawns in Skull Island is pretty standard as well. Um, 213 weapon power, but it does have 5 range and gives you a sniper shot and haywire shot, which are two both uh, pretty good powers to have if you want to use this. Um, as well as the new Sinbad gun. Uh, let me just say this about the Sinbad weapons. This is the only Sinbad weapon I have. In general, all of the Sinbad weapons are great. Albano's Mercy is the best heal in the game. If you want this really good heal for your team, it's a very good weapon to have. Five range, good weapon power. Nothing to complain about. Another option is the new Dreadnought weapon um, in Cool Ranch. The new Dreadnought quest that you accept from that Marleybone Fox in Avery's Court. Um, this is also a pretty good weapon. It is only four range, but it gives you hail of cannonballs, which is pretty nice if you want to use that. Um, and that's kind of really it for the pure shooty uh, weapons. Really, what you should use is Overwatch 5 if you're doing pure shooty. It's the best build, in my opinion. Um, so, and over hat. So, now we're going to go over the robe. So, the robe that I am currently using right now is Blood Flames. You may be saying, what the hell? I got nerfed. What are you doing? Well, Blood Flames are still very good in group fights. If you're playing with a friend or three friends or a group of four, I would recommend that you still use Blood Flames because of Old Scratch. Old Scratch is still able to buff it. Um, Old Scratch is still OP. So Blood Flames are still OP because of Old Scratch. Um, however, if you are doing solo, if you are doing solo, there are better options, I think. And the best option, other than Blood Flames, is the now possible Ready to Spell 5. So, you need the Conqueror's Outfit um, to do Ready Spell 5. This is from the Hoodoo Bundle um, that you have to buy. I think it's 30 bucks. Yes, I believe it's a 30 buck bundle, not a 41. Um, uh, the stats are okay. I mean, it gives health. It's nice. Um, but it gives you Ready Spell. And you will train Ready Spell 2 from the Secret Trainer, of course. Train Ready Spell 2. The Robe gives you Ready Spell 3. A pet pet that gives you ready to spell, such as, uh, I don't know, or do I have a pet with ready to spell somewhere? Here you go, this one has ready to spell. A pet with ready to spell, and then the totem right here that gives ready to spell from the new Sinbad update will give you ready to spell 5. That is the next best thing other than do using blood flames, is to go for ready to spell 5. Um, but that will be for Shooty, shooty Staffy, so I'll go over that when I talk about Shooty Staffy. Um, you can also use the Moo Robe if you want, if you don't want to use Blood Flames. You have Hail of Cannonballs. Bear Trap's not really useful. The Agility is nice, though. Uh, and Bombs, you know, that's 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 the Musketeer's bread and butter, is Bombs. So um, you can go right ahead and use those. Uh, there is Valor's Armor Robe that you can use as well, but I don't really recommend it as much. And yeah, that's really it for the robes. We're gonna go right into the boots. The best boots, of course, Imperial boots of Wu Manchu, Tide boots, 1% um, drop rate. Have fun farming this guy. It gives agility and dodge, really good stats. Um, and Frozen Tide, which is the best power in the game. Freezes targets for one turn. It basically just immobilizes the entire team and allows you to get a whole free round of buffs and free damage, basically. So um, definitely go for these. If you cannot get Tide boots, there's not a lot of great options for Musketeer. Um, which which sucks. Um, as far as boots go, I mean, this, there's really not much. You can use Moo Man shoe boots. They're not awful. Um, right here, I mean, Super Strike Bear Trap, Agility. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, your next best option is probably Gladiator boots, which is from the Empire Bundle. It gives you a Walk in Darkness and some good stats. Um, but really, you want to try to get tight boots for Musketeer. I know it's hard. Um, you can use revive boots in the meantime from the bazaar. There's simple revive boots that you can get. Um, but yeah. Alright. Go into the eye patch here. The one that I use is Patch of St. Fido. I really don't ever change this. Um, however, a good second option is the new Sinbad eye patch from Sinbad Part 2. 
which gives 10 weapon power and a sniper shot. Uh, good weapon power. If you like the sniper shot ability, it's a good power. It's a good thing to have. Uh, and another option can also be the spell, the, the Mojo Mastery eye patch that you get from the black market. That's, if you don't know where that is, that's just located in the Skull Island Bazaar. Just go into the door on the right, buy it for some script. It's a good option as well to use. And if you still don't have any of those, and you're still looking for an option, Patch of the Dead Eye is not terrible. Gives good accuracy. Great Juju is a pretty, pretty good power to have as well. I don't really use it as much, so I don't really use this eye patch. But um, it's not a bad option. And another option could be the... Uh, tai Chi's Blind Luck and Asterion's Ruin. If you like the trick shots, they're not bad as well. Um, they give accuracy, which is nice. Um, they're not a bad option, but Patch of St. Fido from the Crown Shop, level 70. Great stats. Um, and accuracy is the most important most important stat in the game, to me, in my opinion. Um, as well as dodge for swashbucklers. And weapon power probably being third. So, uh, it's just a really good Really good eye patch to use. So onto the totem. The totem that I use is the Jewel of Blue Manchu. Hail of Cannonballs and Super Strike and a lot of accuracy. It's great. This is what I use for another copy of Bombs um, for my pure shooty setup. It's a great, it's a great build. Uh, it's a great piece of gear to have. Um, Super Strike can't complain. Hail of Cannonballs can't complain. Boost off of spell power. If you don't want to use that, you have the Mojo Mastery Dutchman Charms. You farm from the Dutchman. Sniper Shot, Mojo Mastery is great to have. You can swap out the Sniper Shot for Rouse if you'd like. Even Ghost Whale is not awful. But uh, in general, I like to use this um, Mumanchu Totem. Um, the level 65 version, of course. Um, and then the Amulet I like to use, of course, Brass Medallion. The best piece of stat gear in the game, pretty much. Uh, this is the Agility version. There's three different versions. There's one that gives 14 agility, one that gives 14 will, and another that gives 14 strength. So, you basically just swap around these top three stats. 10 accuracy and 5 weapon power stays the same throughout. Here's an example, this is the will version. Um, this is just great to have. 10 accuracy, you need, you need a lot of accuracy, it's great. Um, agility is nice, weapon power is great. If you don't want to use that, there's right hand charm from Mimenchu, another copy of bombs, great accuracy. Bear Trap not as useful, which is why I don't like it as much, but it is an option. You have the Necklace of Hermes, which is an Aqua boss drop. By the way, all these pieces of gear, feel free to look them up on the wiki. It will explain where what bosses drop them, where to farm them. Um, Sky Spirit, which is nice. It's a great buff to have, 100 agility. You normally train a Sky Spirit as a Musketeer, but if you do want a second one, it's not a bad option to have. I personally don't find myself needing it, so I don't use it. Hollow's Necklace, if you'd like to use Valor's Fortresses, I don't find them too too useful. And another option being the uh, Necklace version of the Dutchman Charm, which is the Shrimpy Garnet Necklace. You farm the Prawn Master at the top of Skull Island for. Uh, there's the Weapon Mastery one, there's the Spell Power one. Don't use the Crit Mastery one, because that's throwing. <laughs> um, but in general, um, um, there is also this Revive one that uh, you can farm from Akula Bosses. In general, I like to use the Brass Medallion for pure shooty. And now finally onto the ring here. I like to use the Ring of Hercules. It's always nice to have a piece of big guns gear, infinite range, because your bombs are only limited to six range. There's nothing you can really do about it. You can see Halo Cannonballs. You can see right there uh, at the top right of the card. It says six range. It's the max you can get with it. So it's nice to have uh, a piece of gear that gives big guns. Ring of Hercules, 15 accuracy is great. This is the one that I like to use. Um, there are others you can use that give big guns, but this is the best one in my opinion because of the accuracy. And uh, yeah, it's great to have. It's, it's really good to have um, and to use in four-man groups. Get all those scratch buffs, infinite range. I think it's really nice to have one piece of big guns gear. Um, but if you don't need it, um, you can use Mojo Mastery pieces of gear. Um, there is Bresciani Band. Uh, which gives true grid and base agility if you want to use that. The, the cane ring if you want those epics. And there is also um, Valor's armor ring. But generally I think you should use Ring of Hercules. Try to get um, big guns. If you don't, Revive Ring as well is great. Um, you probably don't want to use Mojo Storm because they're just worse bombs. But uh, yeah, that's that's for, for pure shooty. So we're going to head on to Shooty Staffy now. The Shooty Staffy build 
for musketeers. So that, the shooting staff you build revolves around this weapon right here, the Orb of Nefarious Death, which you also get from the Ashes of the Armada pack. And it only has three range, but it allows you to have double tap five, which I absolutely adore. Double tap five does the same thing as Bladestorm five. Um, basically increases crit on your double taps and also increases your weapon power each time double tap procs. So it's just very nice. It's a great way of doing chains, doing big damage, uh, big chain damage with your with your musketeer. Now you can either do agility based musketeer shooty staffy, or you can do will based shooty staffy musketeer. And I'm gonna go over the differences between them. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip this pet. The only thing that changes for me when I switch to shooty staffy from pure shooty is the weapon. I will then switch my hat. Um, but, well, okay, so I'll either keep my hat as sent around a hat if I'm doing agility base, or I will switch it to this hat right here if I'm doing will based. I'll go over that in a second. Um, and my pet will switch as well to something that gives me more chains, such as this pet right here, because this gives me burst fire and double tap, as well as mojo rising, mojo echo, which is uh, where the staffy part comes in. The powers aren't as as important. I have a team heal on this one. Generally, what you want for a shooty staffy pet, you definitely want burst fire and double tap for double tap five and burst fire two, so you don't have to use the burst fire totem. And then the other two talents you'd want is either Overwatch and Ready to Spell, or Mojo Rising and Mojo Echo, or a combination of those two. Um, Overwatch and Ready to Spell will allow you to reduce their accuracy. Uh, on those procs, Overwatch 3, it allows you to get Overwatch 3 because you are going to be training Overwatch 2 and Ready Spell 2. You can see Ready Spell 2 you train, as well as Overwatch 2 you train at level 20 and 40 for both Overwatch and Ready Spell. You train them from the secret trainers. So, uh, having a pet that gives Ready Spell will allow you to get Ready Spell 3. Having a pet that gives you Overwatch will allow you to get Overwatch 3. So, those are good to have. Personally, I like to have the chains, so I like to use Mojo Echo and Mojo Rising, but I will also switch to... Where is it? Where is it? This pet. This pet sometimes, because instead of Mojo Echo, it gives me Ready Spell, which will allow me to have Ready Spell 3 if I want to be play it more safe and have the accuracy reductions there. Um, and yeah, that's really it for the, uh, the Shooty Staffy Musketeer uh, agility-based. You will use this agility based one if you're soloing. Only if you're soloing, soloing and you want to do double tap five, you'll use this. If you are doing a group, then you will switch over to the will based. So what changes, the the weapon will stay the same. The hat will switch to this, the Feathers of Inkhole, which you get from the Tribal Crew Pack. It's the stat hat that gives will. And the charm will change. You will switch Obsidian Brass Medallion to the will version. That's what will change. Now, you don't have to switch these gears per se, you just have to make yourself have more will than agility. So you can see right here, I have more will than agility. Um, and basically what this allows me to do is, it allows me to keep the chains that I have, it allows me to have double tap five, it allows me to use a pet with all these chains and whatnot, right? But, it makes me will based, so I will get scratch buffs across the board. If, if I'm in a team group with uh, four old scratches, I will get a buff from all four old scratches. I do not have to be right next to all the old scratches, which is great. It allows me to keep the chains, um, but also get all the old scratch buffs. So my blood flames will do more damage, my bombs, my heals, my absorbs. Anything mojo based will uh, do more damage, and I can keep all my chains. So that's why you use the will based uh, shooty staff you must get build. Um, now, what you can do if you want to do the shooty staffy um, solo, what you can also do is what I was saying before is switch to ready spell 5. So, what you would do if you don't want to use blood flames, you'll equip the conqueror's outfit, and then you will also equip the ready spell totem from the new Sinbad fight. Uh, and you need a pet that gives you readied spells. So I would equip uh, this pet right here. And now I have readied spell five and I'm shooty staffy. So this 
This will allow me to do knockback damage, same as Overwatch 5. Alright? Same as Overwatch 5. It's the same thing as Overwatch 5, except for it's ready to spell. And now I get to keep some chains. I get to keep the... I get to keep, uh... Uh, Mojo Rising on this pet in particular. So, uh, this is another option if you don't want to use Blood Flames. You can do ready to spell 5 on your Musketeer solo. And I'm already out of breath, so I'm going to move on from Musketeer. Um, that's really it. I'll show you guys the powers that I use. Well, I'll show you, that, I'll show you the powers that I use for um, agility-based pure shooty. Because that is, I mean, uh, shooty staffy. Agility-based shooty staffy is what I find myself using the most. I'll equip this. My totem will go to this. My pet will go to this. I'll rearrange the powers here for you guys. Oh, and I got to equip Blood Flames as well. This is what I tend to uh, use most of the time. So, Tide, Blood Flames. Move my bombs up. Team heal up. And there really is no right answer to where your power should be. It's just what you want to pull the most. So these are really what I want to pull the most. Bombs. Uh, tide, Blood Flames, Big Guns, uh, Team Hail, I wouldn't mind pulling, this I wouldn't mind pulling. So I'll really just order it in what you want to pull the most. Um, and this is what I would want to pull the most for uh, my Musketeers. Alright, let's move on from Musketeer. So after Musketeer, we're going to move on to Swashbuckler. So Swashbuckler here has a few uh, different options for the weapons, but Generally speaking, for Swashbuckler, you want to do Shooty Stabby or Shooty Slashy on your Swashbuckler. Um, there is pure Stabby builds out there. You can do First Strike 5. If you don't know what First Strike 5 does, basically First Strike 3 allows you to spot sneak attacks, which removes hiddens of players. And then First Strike 5 allows you, basically it makes your First Strikes do the same amount as, same amount of damage as a normal hit. So instead of First Strike doing less damage than a normal hit, with First Strike 5, your First Strikes will do normal damage. It won't do reduced damage. It's not a bad option, but Shooty Stabby, Shooty Slashy is just better because you get chains. So, let's go over the gear. So one of the pieces of gear that changed is the hat. Right here, the Salty Duelist Tricorn. You need this hat for your Swashbuckler. I'm, I can't stress it enough. You need to farm for this hat for Swashbuckler. If you are going to play Swashbuckler, no matter what your build is, farm for this hat. You need it. You need it, you need it, you need it. Sadly, I don't have the agility version. I have the strength version. But I do have accuracy on it, which I can't complain about. Um, I do wish it was the agility version, but it's not as big a deal. If you don't know, these salty uh, pieces of gear all have different stat variants. So you kind of got to get lucky. Um, but it's not too big a deal. I'm okay with losing out on some agility, it's alright. But ideally you would want the one that gives agi agility instead of strength. And obviously you can see it gives you another Black Fog. This is just super important. It's Black Fog is Swashbuckler's version of old blood old blood flames. Like this uh, Black Fog is their bread and butter. Um, hide and then assassin strike. That's how you play Swashbuckler. Or hide, poison, and then assassin strike. That's that's just how you play it. Um so this hat is crucial. You farm this, um, you farm that the weekly hat boss. It requires the royal keys uh, at the Hoof of Destiny in Avery's Court. So you just do those weekly quests uh, when the hat boss is out. And you farm for this. It is the Chrysalis Bug boss thing. I don't know what the heck it's called, but uh, you farm for this hat. Farm for it, farm for it, farm for it. If you don't have it, in the meantime, what you can use is just Corrupted Hat from Mu Manchu. It's not a bad option. Walk in Darkness, Assassin Strike, 13 Agility. Can't complain there. Um, you farm this for Mu Man in Mu Manchu. And uh, yeah, it's a good option. If you don't have that or you don't want to use that, another option is the Crown Shop Hat. It gives good stats. You don't need it. 13 Agility, 10 Level Power, because you know, you're probably better off using these two hats. But um, if you want to, you can use this. It has good stats on it. Um, if you really don't want to use that, Cane Hat is okay. It's not the best. I really would not recommend using it, but if you have nothing else, it's not terrible. There's also um, 
revive hat, like gladiator hat, there's also fortress hat, but really, farm for this. This is what you need for Swashbuckler. You need this hat, go farm for it. All right. <laughs> All right, so let, let's move on to uh, the robe here. Now, the robe that I do use is the crown shop robe. This is the robe that I use. 10 weapon power, 13 agility, 20 armor, not really needed. 8 strength is nice. You might be saying, ah, oh, 8 strength is useless. But really, if you think about it, it just means that buccaneers will have a less chance to crit on you. So it is useful in that sense. It's not as useful as agility, weapon power, and other stats. But it's not like it's, you know, completely useless. Um, if you don't want to buy the crown shop robe, um, another one that you can use is the Yonin Garb if you want Sky Spirit. I use the Sky Spirit Boots, which I'm going to go over instead of this. Um, but this is a good uh, piece of Mushu gear that you can farm for. Uh, that gives Sky Spirit, which is an agility buff for your entire team. Um, as far as the robes go, there's not really a lot of great options for Swash. Those are really the only two I consider really using. You can use um, a Revive Robe or... Valor's Fortress, if you'd like to use those, it's more PvP oriented, um, but you can use those as well. And Corrupted Robe from Mumenshu is okay, I really wouldn't use it though. So we're going to move on to the boots. So like I just mentioned, the boots that I use are the Sky Spirit Boots, Grisa Belepharon. These are really easy to get. Basically just do anything, do any higher level boss, Aquila and higher, uh, and you'll probably get this from a group plunder chest. It drops in group plunder chests in a dozen fights um, all the obsidian plunder chests you can get it from so it's an easy farm you, you know you'll probably get these and you won't even be farming for it you'll just get it randomly um, they're very good a weapon power 12 dodge great swashbuckler stats and sky spirit for that sky spirit buff which I like to have um, and yeah uh, a couple other boot options you do have great juju boots um, here good stats as well not as good and in great juju um, if you like to use non swashbuckler companions this is good to have as well because great juju buffs um, you know the other stats but I tend to always be using agility based companions on my swash so I just go with the sky spirit instead and it just has better stats um, there's stuff like the revive boots here um, these are also really easy to get group plunder stuff Grisa Belephron also drops in group plunder stuff um, and aqua and above they're easy to get you don't even really need to farm for them you'll just kind of get them randomly just pay attention to your drops um, satiric shoes as well good stats if you need a, an assassin strike you can also just um, use the uh, Mu Manchu boots the corrupted Mu boots that you get from doing Mu Manchu 14 agility assassin strike assassin's gloom uh, that's just better than this in my opinion because you get the gloom but if you prioritize, prioritize dodge, you can use this instead. And then Boots of the Crane here, if you really can't get Grease of, Grease of Belephron, which you should, uh, you can farm for Boots of the Crane and Mushu. Um, it gives agility instead of weapon power, which some people might prioritize over. Um, and it gives uh, three less dodge. So um, That's really it for the Boots for Swash. So we're going to go on to the weapons. So there's really two very good options for swashbuckler and there's a third option as well that's pretty good so the one that i'm using actually is the new dreadnought weapon burns blade shooty stabby haywire shot assassin strike i don't really have to explain why that's good it just is a rush shot it's uh, it's quirky not as used much but it is a good weapon and then of course assassin strike is very nice to have this is from the new dreadnought you accept the quest from the guy in aries court the, the fox dude and you just farm this dreadnought and try to get burns blade um, it is very good. Um, the other option being the Kraken Breath set, which is Shooty Slashy, actually. It's not Shooty Stabby. You might think, oh, but I'll lose that on weapon power um, because you don't get Stabby Weapons 3. Well, actually, the Kraken Breath set has 12 more weapon power than Burns Blade. And if you go over here, you can see that Stabby Weapons 3 gives you plus 20 in total where Slashy Weapons 2 gives you plus 8 in total, so you lose out on 12 weapon power, but it's made up for with the Kraken Breath set's base damage being 239, so it actually evens out perfectly, so Burns Blade and Kraken Breath set do the same amount of damage, um, the only difference being the powers. Kraken Breath set, you get a Spirit Decor, which is basically a second El Toro buff, 
which is very, very good for swashbucklers. Um, this this and Burns Blade are the two best weapons for swash, in my opinion. Um, this is just great. I mean, increased accuracy, increased dodge. This is two very important stats, especially for swashbuckler. And, um, yeah, definitely either use this or Burns Blade. For me, I switch between the two. It depends on the fight. If I'm doing an easier fight, I'll tend to do Burns Blade. If I'm doing a harder fight, I'll tend to use Crack and Breath Set. It really depends. Um, another solid option is the Burns Swashbuckler set. This is slashy shooty, so it's not um, stabby shooty. Uh, and the only difference is Super Strike instead of Assassin Strike. Some people might prefer Super Strikes over Assassin Strikes for Swash. I personally don't. I prefer Super Strikes over Assassin Strikes for Buccaneers. Um, so Super Strike, if you don't know, um, it's just a guaranteed Super Strike. So what you're guaranteed after is a Blade Storm. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a big thing, because Assassin Strikes, they don't guarantee a Blade Storm unless you crit it. So, you, know, you might just do an Assassin Strike, and you might not get any chains after it. Um, because if they don't have Vengeance Strike, and you hit them with an Assassin Strike, the only chance of you getting a chain, if it doesn't crit, is Relentless. And Relentless is chance-based. It's all RNG if you proc Relentless. So a Super Strike will guarantee that you proc at least Blade Storm, and you can start the chains going. Um, but it is less damage. It is less damage because it is slashy weapons. You lose out on 12 damage. Um, and I, you know, in general, I just prefer assassin strikes on, on swashbucklers. I prefer the bleed damage. Um, and yeah, but this is also a really good option to use instead. And then if you want to use the old Armada Blade, you can. It's the same as the Burns Blade, except for Haywire Strike, uh, uh and Assassin Strike being different. Assassin's Strike is just better than Haywire Strike, in my opinion, but you can use this as an option. On to the eye patch. The eye patch that I currently am using is the Patch of St. Fido. Great stats. Nothing to complain about here. Get in the crown shot for twenty-seven fifty. Um, crowns, of course. And, yeah, just great stats. I mean, nothing to complain about here. However, there is um, a couple other good options. Sinbad's Dashing Stripes, the new eye patch for Swashbuckler, is a great option. If you want a Vicious Charge, they are great to have. 18 dodge, really high dodge, which is really nice. And Vicious Charge is really nice to have on Swashbucklers. Uh, it gives you a charge down the field, reduces their accuracy, allows you to chain with Glancing Blow. It's, it's a very good eye patch, and I will use it um, depending on the fight. I will switch to this eye patch. So it's a great um, second eye patch to have. There is also the Aquila Revive eye patch, which is pretty good. Um, patch of Serpentine Assault, if you don't want to use the Sky Spirit Boots or Yonin Garb that gives Sky Spirit. This is another Sky Spirit option. Asclepius Talisman, if you want a Valor's Fortress. And those are really the options um, for Swashbuckler. You can use Weapon Mastery from the script uh, Black Market Vendor, but Patch of St. Fido, Dashing Stripes, these are just better. Um, I would use instead. Now on to the Totem. Now, here I am using the Prince of Ilios Quiver. Now, whether or not you have to use the Prince of Ilios Quiver depends on your pet. If your pet gives you Burst Fire, such as this pet, then you do not use, need to use the Totem that gives Burst Fire, because you don't need Burst Fire 3. You train Burst Fire 1 from the Secret Trainer as a Swash, and then you get either your second rank from your Totem, or your pet. And currently, I'm using this pet which doesn't give me Burst Fire, but it gives me Double Tap instead. So, I like to have Double Tap because it's another way for me to chain on my Swash Muffler, which means I lose out on Burst Fire on my pet, so I have to use the Totem, which I'm okay with because the Totem actually gives really good stats. 10 Accuracy and 7 Weapon Power is very nice. Um, but if you are using a pet that has Burst Fire, such as this one, Relent Blade, Burst Fire Elusive, this is a very good pet, um, and I use it a lot. Um, I used to use it a ton, but recently I switched because I got this pet. Um, the only difference between these two pets is it has double tap on this one. This one has burst fire. So this allows me to keep elusive and also have double tap uh, on this pet. So just more chains. If you don't want to use burst fire totem, you're using a burst fire pet like this one. Um, you have a couple options. You can use Weapon Mastery Totem that gives Rouse, or the one that gives Mighty Charge. Both are good. Um, you have Sniper Shot if you want to use that. And you also just have the Mumanchu Totem, 
which gives Walking Darkness an Assassin's Strike. If you need another Assassin's Strike, for me, I think the general rule is you should have at least two Assassin's Strikes on your buck on your uh, Swashbuckler. Three is very good. So three is very comfortable, at least two uh, on your Swashbuckler. Um, you have uh, this totem right here, the Great Juju Totem, which is also pretty good, not too bad. And uh, I'm just going to quickly check if there's any other... Yeah, there's not really uh, other great totems. You know, the Weapon Mastery ones are pretty solid. Don't use Return Fire Quiver. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's really it for totems. So, Burst Totem, if you don't have Burst on your pet, if you do have Burst Fire on your pet, um, your next best option is either Moo Totem or Weapon Mastery Totem, I'd say. On to the charm. You guessed it. Obsidian Brass Medallion. Best stack gear in the game. 14 agility, 10 accuracy, 5 accuracy, can't complain. You can use the Moo Man Shoe Totem. It doesn't give us acid strike though, so I don't really like to use it. Um, there is a Great Juju one. Um, here's the right hand locket. This is the Moo Man Shoe version. Um, just no assassin strike, so I don't really like to use it. Um, there's not really other great options for uh, the charm for Swashbuckler, so I would really just try to get the agility version of Brass Medallion. And now onto the ring. I just use Moo Ring for my other copy of Assassin Strike. 10 weapon power, can't complain. If you don't want to use this, there is Mojo Mastery and Weapon Mastery um, rings as well. And there also is the new Sinbad Gold Ring, which gives Valus Fortress a hold the line and a heal. It's also a really good option if you want to have a hold the line on your swashbuckler in a fortress. Um, this is a good piece of gear to use. Um, personally, I don't want a Valus Fortress or hold the line on, on swash. I prioritize other things, but this is not a bad option. And I'll quickly show you guys the powers that I, my power set up here. This is what I got here. Yet again, you might want to prioritize getting a uh, heal on this. Um, mine is from my pet right here, so you might want to train Rouse from the Privateer Trainer if you want to heal. Or you can use a piece of revive gear uh, as well. Alright, let's move on from Swash. That is Swashbuckler. Next on, we're going to move to Buccaneer. So Buccaneer, I'm actually going to show you guys two characters. There's two different builds for Buccaneer that I recommend. It's either Slashy Smashy or Hybrid Shooty Slashy. So you can choose which one you want. I'll show you the. I'll show you why both of them are good. So for Buccaneer, start off with the Slashy Smashy Buccaneer. This is my Slashy Smashy Buccaneer. The weapon that I use is Craven Blade. Um, the build revolves around using Blade Storm 5. Um, slashy Smashy is the best Slashy Smashy build, in my opinion. Um, if you want to be Slashy Smashy and not do Blade Storm 5, there's a couple other options. Um, you have Axe of Minimator Lords, which gives follow through, which is like another Relentless, which is pretty solid. You have the Supercharged weapon, um, either the Sea Sheller or the Furious Flamberge that you buy from the Crown Shop. This is basically a Vicious Charge. But it's guaranteed to be a super strike, so it's very nice. Very good power to use. And you also have the Anchor Tanker, which gives a spirit. Just like the Kraken Breath set for Swash um, gives a spirit. It's actually the, the highest weapon power on any weapon. 263, it is the most. Um, and it gives a spirit, which is very nice. I will switch to this sometimes. Um, it's very good if I want to guarantee that I don't miss on my Reckless Frenzies. If I'm doing uh, a fight and I want to one-round it, I want to just Reckless Frenzy turn one and kill the boss, I will use a Spirit. The core it's pretty good for uh, Obsidian Brass. Um, the Hat boss from the Hoof of Destiny. Um, Obsidian Scratch. There's, there's, it's very situational, but it is pretty good depending on, on your fights. It is a good option if you do not want to do Bladestorm 5. Um, there is also Turn the Tide weapons like Dragon Axe, but um, ideally you want to do Bladestorm 5. Bladestorm 5, you don't know. Bladestorm 3, you train naturally. You get Bladestorm on your pet, like I do here, and then your weapon. If you don't have Craven Blade, which is from the Ashes of the Armada pack, if you don't want to spend crowns for that, you can go ahead and farm for sort of Talos right here. 
which does 223 weapon power, so it just does a, a good amount less because it is only level 60. But it does give you Bladestorm as well. It's the same, just a little bit less weapon power. You farm this from Talos um, in Aquila, which is the dungeon where you first meet Hercules. And uh, you can farm for this. It's the, I guess, free-to-play option. Um, but if not, go for the Craven Blade. Um, you have about, or you have around a one in eleven chance to pull it, uh, pull a Craven Blade each pack. So it's decent odds for uh, for Pyro 101. So uh, let's go on to the hat right here. So the hat that I use, Corrupted Samurai's Hot of Kito, the Mu Manchu Corrupted Hat, 13 strength, Super Strike, Vicious Charge, nothing to complain about. Super Strike Guaranteed Crit allows you to do your chains. Vicious Charge gives you two range, my bad, two times your movement range, reduces their accuracy, and you get Glancing Blow, which is a guaranteed hit after. Just great powers, great hat overall. I'd recommend using this hat for any Buccaneer build. It's a great hat. If you don't have it, or if you have another piece of Corrupted Gear using instead, you can use something like Bacton's Tusks, which are from the Tribal Crew Pack. Just good stats overall, not a bad option. You also have the Salty Hat. Um, I got lucky with my stats here. If you don't know, it is random um, what stats it has. So you kind of got to get lucky with the uh, hat variant that you get. I happen to get the one that gives strength and accuracy, which is perfect. Can't complain. Um, and it gives you a second copy of Whale's Might if you want another Whale's Might. Um, I prefer to use the... Mu Manchu hat to the left, but you can use this if you want a second Whale's Might for sure. Uh, a couple of, couple other options, you have the High Plains Headgear, which gives Call to Arms. This is the same reason why you'd use the uh, Spirit Weapon, is if you want to make sure you hit Reckless Frenzy. Very situational, but you can use it in certain times. You get it from Cool Ranch early on, so if you want to farm for it early on, it's definitely not necessary, but it is nice to have. Um, there is, of course, Valor's Fortress Helm. There is a Revive Helmet. If you want to heal, you can use as well. I would not recommend that you use the Cane Hats. Sundering Strike is a very bad power. Triton's Chorus is a very good power, but Sundering Strike is just useless. There's better Triton's Chorus gear, which you're going to see uh, later on. Um, so yeah, that's it for the hats. Gonna go on to the outfit here. So I use the Bactoon's Garb. Just great stats. 8 weapon power, 16 strength. And it actually gives a good amount of armor. Armor is pretty useless if, if, if it's not in high amounts. But this is a decent high amount, so um, it does provide a little bit of protection. Not much, but a little bit. And yeah, this is just good stats. I like to have a lot of weapon power and a lot of strength on my Buccaneers. Um, it works well with Bladestorm 5. I crit a ton. And for me, a good offense is a good defense. And that's how I like to play Buccaneer. Go in and just destroy. So this robe helps me do that. If you don't want to use that, you definitely don't need to. Uh, Mu Manchu robe is fine. It's not a bad option. You can use the corrupted Mu Manchu robe. Um, you can also use Arms of the Valiant if you like Assassin Strikes on Buccaneer. I don't because they do not guarantee Blade Storm like Super Strikes do. Um, so I don't like to use Assassin Strikes, but you can use this if you are uh, an avid Assassin Strike user. Smallest Hobby Gillies, if you like to have a fortress, you can use that as well. And this is another piece of Call to Arms gear that you can use instead if you want to use that. Um, and this is the uh, Mu Manchu robe. Gives Vicious Charge and Levy Call. This is only the level 60 version. You obviously want the 65 one for one extra strength. It's not bad, um, but I prefer to go with the stat robe because I already used this hat. I don't think I need another piece of corrupt gear. On to the boots. I am using the Brogans of the Lydia. This is This is the cane boots. That I like to use. It gives Triton's Course, which is a great power. Um, team wide um, damage mitigation against melee units. You can see block 25% damage versus slashy big weapons, big choppy weapons, and stabby for 10 turns, which is great. And it's for the entire team. So not just Buccaneers, not just adjacent squares, the entire team. And it gives plus 19 strength, plus 14, and then increased base strength increases it by 5. So plus 19 strength, which is a lot. So, very nice to have, um, and that's how I have 135 strength and a lot of weapon power. Um, so, yeah. Um, another couple of boot options you can use. Um, these are great to have. Master Smuggler's Greaves. This is from the Black Market. Buy this with Scrip um, in the Skull Island Bazaar. Uh, these are great to have situationally. Um, there's a lot of times where you need to, you want a Reckless Frenzy turn one, but you don't have the movement range. This gives you plus one movement range. 
So it'll allow you to uh, use Reckless Frenzy turn one or turn two uh, on certain bosses. It's a good thing to have for situational fights. Um, you have the Whale Might boots from Marleybone here, another good option um, to have. You also have Walk in Darkness boots if you like to use hides on your Buccaneer. There's uh, Dragoon boots as well, which are the same as Auric Pearl boots, but instead of eight weapon power, they give strength. They give 10 strength instead. So if you prioritize strength of weapon power, you can use, use those instead. And uh, yeah, that's really it for the boots. That's really it for the boots. Um, quickly check if there's really any other boot options. There is, uh, there is Bactoon's boots that you can use as well. Um, right here, back to, back to Moccasins. Same as the robe here, slightly uh, less strength though and less armor. Um, but if you do want the stats, you can use those. And yeah, let's move on to the eye patch here. So there's two eye patch options, uh, in my opinion. The one that I'm currently using is Sinbad. Sinbad's Bold Stripes. It gives 10 weapon power and second chance. It's the new Sinbad eye patch from Sinbad Part 2. You farm for it. These eye patches are actually fairly easy to get. They drop quite frequently. And second chance just allows you to keep your chains going. You know, it's a great way to just keep those chains going. Um, 10 weapon power is always nice. And yeah, you don't naturally train second chance. If you don't have second chance on your pet, I would definitely try to get this eye patch. It's, it's, it's just a nice thing to have. But if you don't want to use this, another great option is the Patch of St. Fido. Like I've said in um, all, my other, all my other characters, Patch of St. Fido is just a great patch to have from the Crown Shop. Great stats. Um, accuracy, the most important stat to me. A level 1 power is great. Extra dodge is always nice. And uh, yeah, those are the two eye patches I would go for. You can also use Schemer's eye patch, which gives Assassin's Strike. Yet again, I don't like Assassin Strikes on Buccaneer, but you can use it if you like Assassin Strikes. Totem, don't argue about it. Get Eyes of the Cobra, go and get it. Um, great for any Buccaneer. First Strike is great to have on your Buccaneer. Um, my pet also gives me First Strike, so it allows me to have First Strike 2, which allows First Strike to proc up to three times. So it's just more chains, you know, more ways to do damage. Um, and it's just a great totem to have. The stats are okay. You farm this from Mari in Troy in Aquila. You far, she's the uh, Aphidian Archer boss um, in that big uh, that big room, that big room. Uh, and you can farm her. She does have a chance to randomly respawn. Somebody told me, I think, in the comments that she can respawn if you kill her last. Um, so just wait like a minute or two in that same room, and she might respawn if you kill Mari last. So, um, I'm not sure how true that is, but I was told that. Um, if you don't want to use this, you can use Weapon Mastery Totem. There are, you know, some options, but um, really nothing too great. Um, you know, you, you do have, like, Assassin Strike um, Totem. Uh, you can use Weapon Mastery, of course, but really, go for Eyes of the Cobra on your Buccaneer. Go get it. Onto the charm, you guessed it. Brass Medallion, best piece of stack here in the game. Of course, the Strength version. 10 accuracy and 5 weapon power, can't complain. If you want to use an Assassin Strike, you do have this charm. I believe there's another Assassin Strike charm for Buccaneer that's escaping me. Um, but uh, really, just use Brass Medallion. Um, you know, there's the Valor's Fortress charm that you can use instead. There's Victoria Cross if you want to revive instead. Um, you can also use Soldado Amulet, which is just like the boots but it gives you less less strength. So I use the boots, so I don't need to use this. But if you don't use the boots, this is an option if you want to try this course. And then as far as the ring goes, I just use, um, oh, let me find it. I just use the Garnet Aztecasaur ring, which gives me weapon pat, weapon mastery. Um, you can make it either Mighty Charge or Rouse. Rouse is actually probably better. Uh, I don't really know why I have the Mighty Charge one equipped right now. Um, Rouse, you'll probably get a little bit more uh, benefits from the Mighty Charge because you already have a bunch of charges. Um, another option is the Sinbad's Gold Ring. Um, hold the line 5. You can actually run on your Buccaneer. It's not a bad option. This gives you a Fortress and Health and Hold the Line. Um, this is I would recommend this ring as well. It's good to have if you have Hold the Line on your pet. I wouldn't recommend using this if you just have Hold the Line 4. If you have Hold the Line on your pet, you can use this ring for Hold the Line 5. 
gives a good amount of health. A fortress, it's definitely not bad. And the pet that I am currently using gives me Relentless, Bladestorm, First Strike, and Repost. You need Bladestorm on your pet and Relentless on your pet. It's a must for Buccaneer. You just need those two. Those are the two things you got to prioritize. Um, it gives good powers as well for me, Rally and Shark's Fury. And then I also like uh, First Strike and Repost. First Strike allows me to get First Strike 2, of course, like I mentioned earlier. And Repost is just nice to have. I mean, you're doing all those charges. You reduce their accuracy. You're going to dodge. You're not going to get Vengeance Strike procs. You are going to dodge. Um, so having Repost is, is pretty nice because it does it just does a, a good amount of damage. And uh, another way to get those chains going. So that's the pet I use. Another option is Double Turn the Tide Pet. Relentless Blade Storm, Turn the Tide, Turn the Tide on your pet great option I highly recommend it um, if you don't know what it does um, basically once you enter half health it'll increase your crit by 25% chance which is an insane amount so um, I don't have a double turn of the tide pet with relentless and blade storm but um, definitely an option you can also get elusive on your pet a second chance on your pet is also not bad but uh, this is the pet that I like to use I'll show you guys the powers my power order real quick this is my power order. These are just the ones I like to pull. You know, you want to have a good mix between your strength buffs. Reckless Frenzy, I always put one. And you want your uh, your charges and super strikes um, within these first 10 powers. Got a heal. Got my Triton's Chorus. I'll move it up, you know, situationally. But now I'm going to move on to hybrid buccaneer so we're gonna stay as buccaneer but i actually have to switch characters um this guy's not even max yet so he doesn't even have the gear equipped but i'm just gonna quickly run down what you would use for hybrid buccaneer if you don't know hybrid buccaneer um if you don't know hybrid buccaneer um similar a lot in gear to shooty to uh slashy smashy buccaneer but um, different in that instead of getting Bladestorm 5, you'll prioritize um, Burst Fire and Double Tap Chains. So the pet that I have right now, Relentless, Double Tap, Second Chance, Repost. To me, the perfect hybrid pet would be Relentless, Double Tap, Burst Fire, and then either First Strike or Repost. So if that Second Chance was Burst Fire, it would be perfect to me. But it's alright, it gives me Second Chance, which I still like a lot. So the hat um, stays Corrupted Hat. Um, the robe that you would probably want to use is actually English Bill Obsidian Jacket. You're, you're running um, shooty slashy. So this is a good robe to have uh, against muskets. Um, you can also just use Bactoon's robe. If you don't want to use this, if, you're, if you know you're not going to fight muskets in a fight, you can just go ahead and use Bactoon's garb um, like the, the slashy, smashy buccaneer. Um, the boots... Um, the same boots, you can just use Brogans of the Lydiar. Um, you know, there are some other boot options, Gladiator boots. These are the Dragoon Heavy boots I was talking about earlier. There are the Salty boots, Vicious Charge, um, and the boots of the Valiant right now. Um, but really, I would just stick with the Brogans of Lydiar. The weapon you're going to want to use is the Kraken Breath Set. This is the weapon that you want to use. Gives a spirit. Shooty Slashy allows you to get those shooty chains. Um, and yeah, you can also use the Haywire Swashbuckler set that I was talking about earlier on Swashbuckler. Um, the, my bad, the, the Burns Swashbuckler set, not the Haywire Swashbuckler set, the Burns one, which gives, um, which is just like this, but instead of Haywire Strike, it gives you a Super Strike. So it's, it's very good in that sense. Um, another great option if you don't want to use the uh, Spirit Weapon. But generally speaking, you want to use this as spirit weapon. Um, it's what the build is around. Eye patch wise, um, you have a few options. Um, you can use weapon mastery. You can just use patch of Saint Fido as a great option. Uh, I would either do patch of Saint Fido or the second chance eye patch like from before. Um, there is patch of the Cage Beast. There's a couple other options, but um, really, either patch of the Saint Fido or the second chance eye patch from Sinbad Part Two. Totem wise. Um, I do not have Burst Fire on my pet, so I have to use the Quiver for uh, those extra chains. If you do have Burst Fire on your pet, then you would just use Eyes of the Cobra. So these two are the ones you want to use, depending on how your pet is. If you got Burst Fire on your pet, use Eyes of the Cobra. If you don't have Burst Fire on your pet, use Prince of Ilios Quiver. Um, if you have both of them, you can... Um, well, actually, no. If you have both of them, 
you want to use as the Cobra for First Strike too. So really just use any of these two. Um, weapon Mastery ones are okay, but really just use these two. Uh, as far as the charms go, same thing, Obsidian Brass Medallion stays the same. Um, you know, of course you have other options, like Weapon Mastery and whatnot. That stays the same, and the ring will stay the same. So not a lot changes with the hybrid, just you switch Bladestorm 5 for Burst Fire and Double Tap Chains instead. Alright, that is both Buccaneer builds right there. I need a drink because I don't edit these videos and my voice box is about to freaking collapse. Alright, let's move on to Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor. My least favorite class. <laughs> I'm sorry, just K.I. K.I. mistreats Witch Doctor. But uh, let's go home. Let's go home and uh, we'll go over to the Witch Doctor build. Now really, Witch Doctor has one build and it's just pure staffy. Really, um, you know, you can do shooty staffy but I just do not recommend it I'm not even gonna go over the build for it because you just don't get accuracy you don't get a lot of accuracy um, and which doctor you need range for so using shooty staffy over nefarious death only is gonna give you three range so I really don't recommend it I just recommend that you use fool's wand on your on your witch doctor um, a ranged wand so Pure Staffy, Fool's Wand. If you still don't know why Fool's Wand is meta for level 70 max level Witch Doctors, you might be like, what the heck, level 10, 50 weapon power, what is this doo-doo? Well, there's not really a lot of good 6 range weapons in the game. There's actually only 2. There's only 2 staffs in the game that give 6 range. And that is Fool's Wand and Mu Manchu's Wand. Now, you might still be like, okay... Well, why would you not just use the one that has more weapon power? It's because of the epic. Witch Hunter 3 is very good. Um, and Coward's Bane is very not good. <laughs> so the reason why we use Fool's Wand is because we don't prioritize chain damage. We purely prioritize um, using um, our powers like Joba's Embrace, Mordsong, and, and whatnot. So, you know, that's what we, we prioritize. So... Um, you don't prioritize chains on Witch Doctors. So, we use the Fool's Wand because it gives us Witch Hunter 3. You train Witch Hunter 1 from the Secret Trainer, and then you get Witch Hunter on your pet, um, like I have right here. Witch Hunter, not the greatest Witch Doctor pet, I know. Um, and that allows you to have Witch Hunter 3. Witch Hunter does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage. It basically acts as intuition. It's a first strike against other Witch Doctor enemies. And Witch Hunter 3 basically increases your magic resist so much that you will take pretty much no damage. Um, pretty much no damage after you proc Witch Hunter 3. Um, you can see it right here. So, make a bonus attack if enemy uses magic. And it, bonus magic resist. It's a lot. You get so much mag magic resist that you basically become resistant to any other magic attack while you have this buff up. So it's very good to have. And it's just better than Coward's Bane. Coward's Bane being the cheap shot of Witch Doctors. The parting shot of Witch Doctors. It's just not good. It's not going to proc a lot. Um, and Witch Doctors have such low accuracy that you don't even worry about damage. Because you're probably just going to miss anyways. So this is why we use Fool's Wand. Um... You know, if you want to, if you're in a smaller enclosed area, you can use the the, uh, the PvP champion weapons. They give one less range, but they actually give you weapon power. If you want to prioritize that, you can, if you happen to have the champion weapons. Um, if you're willing to sacrifice one range for damage, go ahead. Um, I will use this sometimes if I know the battlefield is small and I don't need that much range. But a lot of the times, you're going to need the six range. You're going to need all the range you can get. So let's go over the gear real quick. So hat. Witch Doctors don't really get great hats. Um, one of the hats you can use is Conqueror's hat from the Conqueror bundle. Gives a second grade juju and good stats. Will and health is great to have. You can also just use the Corrupted hat. Mornsong, Jobu's Embrace. Um, those are just two good Witch Doctor powers. And good will. Another hat that I like to use as well is Geomancer's Usham. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> Mushu hat. You farm this, the most efficient farm is farming general. So, 
the farm for this. Big Guns gear is very good to have on Witch Doctor. It's very good to have with a bunch of scratch buffs. Uh, very good to have. So, um, another thing you can use is Call to Arms if you're one of those people that are using something like this. Something that actually gives you damage. If you want to actually hit things, you can use um, Call to Arms, but really you don't want it because in that case you would probably just use El Toro or, or something to increase your accuracy. Um, but uh, yeah, there is also Rally Call Hat, which is not a bad option um, to buff your entire team's will. If you want to go ahead and use that um, and there is also the salty Hoogan's tricorn hat which is the free-to-play uh, version of the kangaroos hat um, the kangaroos hat just to me just has better stats so I use it instead um, if I want a second grade juju but uh, yeah so wait I have two kangaroos hats does that mean I have two kangaroo robes Hmm, I might have to check that. Okay, anyway. Um, let's go into the boots. Tide boots, of course. Frozen tide boots, best power in the game. Um, if you don't have these, it sucks for you because there's really not a lot of great Witch Doctor boots out there. Um, you, of course, can use the Moo Manchu boots. That's probably your your next best option. Mojo Storm, Joby's Embrace, two great AoEs, plus Will. It's great. Um, but really try to get Frozen Tide. I know it's a hard farm. It's a 1% drop rate. Good luck. If you don't want to use these and you want to use another piece of Big Guns gear, you have um, the Swami Slippers here. Gives Big Guns some Marley Bone drop you find some Marley Bone bosses for. Gives Will and Dodge, not bad stats. And Big Guns, it's great. Um, and there is Shoes of Houdini if you want another Mojo Storm, but in that case, just, just, just use these boots, you know. So, <laughs> that's it for the boots. The weapon, of course, being the Fool's Wand. And the Eye Patch. Really, you just want to increase your Mojo Mastery. They're not about chains, they're about using your powers, doing the most damage you can with your powers. So I would definitely recommend using this eye patch. However, there is a new eye patch out for Witch Doctors, the Sinbad Daring Stripes here, which gives 10 spell power and the ability Maelstrom. I actually, you know, you can argue this is even better. Um, I'm definitely going to be using this more often. Um, depends on if I need it. You know, a lot of the times I, def I find myself not needing the Maelstrom, but it is a very nice power to have. It's a quirky power to have, um, and 10 spell power is nice, of course, as well. So it is a good thing to have and uh, try to farm for. Very easy to drop. Just do this in bed part two dungeon a few times, you'll get it. And, uh, yeah, that's really it for the eye patches. Totem. Totem. Um, right now, all I use is just Mojo Mastery. You want to do as much... You want to have as much Mojo and spell power as possible. I use the one that has Raz as well. I just like to have heals on Wish Doctor because I'm always using Scratch. Um, there is, of course, uh, Moo Totem. Gives Embrace and Morning Song. It's not bad. There's Valor's Fortress. You have Revives that you can use. And the other thing that you have is the Ready Spell Totem. This is probably the second best option. If you don't have Ready Spell on your pet, you can go for this. And just like the Musketeer, if you don't want to use Blood Flames because they are nerfed, which, by the way, I didn't even go over Robe. Um, <laughs> let me switch back to Robe. Blood Flames, um, City and Blood Jacket here, um, you can use for groups. It's still good even after the nerf. You still want to use this in groups because Old Scratch still buffs it. However, if you are soloing, soloing, you can use the Readied Spell Robe and go for Readied Spell 5 on your Witch Doctor. I don't have a second one. The one that I'm using is currently on my, on my musket. I do not have a second one, I don't think, but maybe I do because I have two Conqueror hats. So I'm going to have to go check that out see if I do um, somewhere but uh, um, um, anyway so you can use the ready spell robe as well if you don't want to use blood flames I'd recommend that you go for ready spell 5 solo on witch doctor but if you are doing a team group thing use blood flames they're still very good with old scratch buffs and um, and yeah that's where this totem would come in play you use the ready spell totem you use the ready spell um, robe and then you would have ready spell on your pet and you already train ready spell one and two from the secret trainer, and that's ready spell five right there. So, and then we're gonna move on to the charm right here. I use the big guns charm, Jade Fleet charm. This is where I get my big guns from. Um, I will switch it to Mojo Mastery sometimes, um, which I don't think I have on me right now. I will switch it to Mojo Mastery sometimes if I want to use the Geomancer's hat for my big guns instead. Not bad to have two big guns though on Witch Doctor. 
So if you want to use this hat, as well as this charm, there's really not a lot of great charms. Um, you don't even want to use Brass Medallion because you don't really care so much about the stats because you're not going to be chaining. Um, there is a great Juju charm out there that you can use, and there's also a Valor's Armor charm if you want to use that. As far as ring goes, I just use Mu, Mu Manchu Ring for the Mojo Storm. Always good to have Mojo Storm. That's their bread and butter. Scratch buff Mojo Storm. That's how you play Witch Doctor. Um, there is, of course, uh, Mojo Mastery. Um, do I have it somewhere? Okay, I don't. Mojo Mastery uh, Ring, which is like this one, but make it Mojo Mastery, not base agility. Um, and yeah, there's also a Rally Call Ring. A Ring of Athena from... Aquila that you can farm for. Um, that's also a good option. It's not a bad option as well. Not a lot of great rings, and there's just really not a lot of great stuff for Witch Doctor as far as the gear goes. They kind of get, um, they, they don't get a lot of love. <laughs> I'll say that. And uh, finally, the pet here. Um, the two important things on a, a Witch Doctor pet are Ready Spell and Witch Hunter. That's all you need. Ready Spell and Witch Hunter. If you can get Elusive as well, which I have, that's great. If you can get Mojo Rising, that's that's nice as well. Um, and a heal and a will buff. Um, you know, the powers don't matter as much. But definitely want to try to get Ready Spells uh, so you can have at least Ready Spell 3 or 5. And Witch Hunter on your pet to try to get Ready to try to get Witch Hunter 3. And that's it for Witch Doctor. I'm gonna move on to Privateer. Um, and Privateer is a, a tricky one for me because. There's actually a better build than the one that I use right now on Privateer. Um, and I'm in this situation where I just don't have another Hoodoo bundle <laughs> to uh, to use it. And that's actually Ready to Spell 5 on Privateer. Um, Ready to Spell 5 on Privateer is just um, better, in my opinion, than Repel Borders 5 at this point. So what I'm using right now is Repel Borders 5, simply because I don't have another um, Hoodoo Bundle. I don't have another Conqueroo uh, outfit to use. So I will go over the Repel Borders 5 privy first. So, first off, the hat. Battle Zeal. Um, second Battle Zeal, this is from the Hoof of Destiny fight. It's one of those new pieces of gear. Um, I happen to get the one that has Will and Strength, which I'm fine with. Um, battle Zeal, the second Battle Zeal is really nice to have. Um, it's very good to have. It's very good. Um, one of the best powers in the game is Battle Zeal. And uh, it's just a very strong power, and I don't think I really have to go over why having two of them is great. It's just good to have another one. It increases the chance that you pull it. And uh, yeah, you do have all the Hold the Line options. If you want to do Hold the Line 3 um, or Hold the Line 5 on Privy, I don't like to. I don't like to use Hold the Line because I'm just repel bordering them away anyway. Um, there's a Rally Call hat here that you can use, um, and there is also a Corrupted Moo hat, but I don't recommend using it because it doesn't give big guns. So here's the Corrupted Warlord's headgear from Moo. Um, it's still very good to use if you want to use it, if you don't have anything else, but it doesn't give any big guns. So Robe, of course, big guns, I mean, uh, Blood Flames, um, for those group fights. If you aren't using Blood Flames, then the same thing goes with uh, the other classes where you want to probably want to use Ready to Spell 5. Um, you can also use the, if you don't want to do Ready to Spell 5, you can also use the Corrupted Robe, which gives big guns here, which is nice, and 13 will. So this is another piece of big guns gear. That's their one main source of damage. Old Scratch buff and big guns, that's how Privateer does damage. Um, but if you don't do Blood Flames, um, you want to do that Ready to Spell 5 build. Boots, Tide Boots again. I know, Tide Boots. Um, they're just the best boots in the game. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so try to farm for those if you can't. You always have the Hold the Land boots. If you want to go for a Hold the Land 3 uh, build with the Cane gear, um, there's not a lot of great options. There's another Rally Call if you want a second Rally Call. Um, and there's also Corrupted Boots. Uh, here, the Corrupted Warlord boots, which give big guns if you want to use for another copy of big guns. Other than that, um, great juju boots are pretty nice too. A Marley bone that you can farm for. But really want to try to get tied boots. So the weapon that I'm using for the ready for the Repel Borders 5 build. This is the weapon you need to use for Repel Borders 5. Captain Blood's Obsidian Hook. Uh, for, of course you farm Obsidian Blood for it. And Scrimshaw. 195 weapon power, Repel Borders and Repost. Nice. Uh, you get an extra Repost. Uh, an extra talent in there. Which is nice. 
and Repel Board is 5, same thing as Overwatch 5, and Ready Spell 5, it knocks them back. Um, that's really it. I mean, there's really not other great options. I mean, uh, I mean, you have, like, the hold the line weapons if you want to do that build. But, uh, other than that, really nothing great. Staff of Power is okay. It's not bad. But, really, for Privateer, you, re you really want to do Ready Spell 5 or Repel Borders 5 for PvE. Eye patch wise we have the Master Smuggler's Cowl I use just for Mojo Mastery. Um, Witch Doctors rely a lot on uh, spell power, a lot of spell power abilities, you know, big guns, blood flames, uh, your heals, your team heals and your single heals, artilleries, um, and your, your, your Valor's armor, so gunnery. A lot of it relies on having spell power, um, so increasing that that spell power with Mojo Mastery I patch from the Bazaar. Not the Bazaar, the Black Market, located in the Skull Island Bazaar, is great to have. Um, there's also an option now. Um, Rally Call is a good option. Not the one I was talking about. You go find it in the shared bank. Uh, here it is. Uh, Sinbad's Heroic Stripes, the Sinbad I patch. Um, from the new Sinbad Part 2 dungeon. If you haven't picked up on it, all the Sinbad eye patches are really good for the classes. This gives Valor's Rampart, which is really nice. It used to only be obtainable in the Crown Shop from a strength-based weapon, which sucked. But now you have a team-wide absorb. This is a very good eye patch to use um, if you don't want to use Mojo Mastery. Team-wide absorb, um, and it is buffed by Old Scratch. So if you got a bunch of Old Scratches, Valor's Rampart eye patch, you're good to go. Actually, you know what? I might equip it. No, I'll move it to the backpack. But uh, it's definitely a very good eye patch to use um, if you do not want to use Mojo Master it. Um, so onto the totem here, Mana Core Sting required for the Repel Borders, uh, for the Repel Borders five build. Um, it's just you just need it. It's, it's you need it um, for it. If you're not doing Repel Borders five, you know you have the Mojo Mastery uh, stuff. You have the hold the line pieces of gear, um, and you have Blue Manchu gear, which is okay. But really, you want to either have your totem be Repel Borders or Ready Spell. Um, and I talk about the Ready Spell 5 um, builds in my Musketeer and my Witch Doctor. Um, so, if you're just checking out the Privateer, you can also check out the Witch Doctor and Musketeer. They also have the chance of running Respe Ready Spell 5. They do benefit from running Ready Spell 5, so you can also use that. And I'll quickly go over it. Go over it here. The charm that I use, Big Guns Charm, um, from Menchu. Right hand strand, uh, revive, Big Guns, health. Nothing, nothing to really say about it. It's great. I mean, it's another copy of Big Guns. You want to have multiple copies of Big Guns because that's how you do damage. It's how you do damage in a group as a privateer. Um, when everybody's running old scratch, you want to be able to Big Gun spam. Um, you do have Assassin Strike. If you're one of the people that like to use Assassin Strikes on Privateer, you do have options with that. You have a Totem that gives Assassin Strike. You have Special Branch Ribbon here. Um, you, of course, have Mojo Mastery as well if you already have enough big guns. Um, I wouldn't really use Brass Medallion because you don't prioritize chains. Um, you have this Assassin Strike charm as well. Um, and you even have Mojo Storm, which I don't really recommend unless you have... Uh, an actual ranged weapon, but it, you can get some damage from Mojo Storm, but you know, it only has three range if you're using Repel Borders 5, so I don't really recommend it. Um, and yeah, onto the ring here, uh, just using Mu Manchu Ring, another copy of Big Guns. Like I said, you want to have those multiple copies of Big Guns to spray on your enemies. That's how you do damage. Um, there is the Hold the Line Valor's Fortress Ring, which you can use now, which I don't think I have on this character right now. Um, hold the line from the Sinbad Part 2 dungeon. You farm for Sinbad's gold ring. Um, I showcase it in the Buccaneer, in my, on my Buccaneer. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good option if you want to run the Hold the Line 3 uh, or Hold the Line 5 on your Privateer. Uh, as far as the pet goes, if you're doing Repel Borders 5, you just want Repel Borders. If you can get Relentless on your pet as well, that's nice. If you can get Elusive, that's nice. If you can get Repost, that's nice. A nice power to have on Privateer is Brutal Charge. Um, there's sometimes where uh, you can charge down the field. and uh, um, it's, it's a nice thing to have uh, for situational stuff. Um, but really, you, you need Repel Borders 5. Uh, my pet's not that great. It doesn't have Relentless on it. It's not very good. 
but uh, I don't care too much because all, all I really care about is repel borders. Now, if you do want to do the Ready to Spell 5 build, you need the Conqueroo Bundle Robe, you need to have the Ready to Spell Totem, and you need to have Ready to Spell on your pet, and of course your weapon is going to be the Orb of Nefarious Death. That build, I think, is better right now. Um, I am going to go for it at some point, <laughs> once I can afford it. <laughs> um, um, because it's just more chains, um, and you just need a good pet with it. So the pet that you'd probably want is Burst Fire, Double Tap, Ready to Spell Overwatch on it. And, uh, yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> I think we're good. Um, I'm out of breath. I'm tired. Um, as you know, this is a very long video, so feel free to skip around and look at your classes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um... This took a lot of farming for me to get everything that I wanted for these builds. Um, let me know uh, any questions. I'm sure you guys have a bunch of questions. So let me know what questions you have. Um, if you need to know where to farm for a piece of gear, either search it up on the Pyro 101 wiki or ask in the comments. I will more than, I, I'd be more than happy to, to do it for you and tell you where to farm for everything. If you guys need pet morphs, if you saw a pet that you liked, um, that I was using, feel free to ask for a morph. Um, I try to morph with everybody that asks. Sometimes I don't have gold. Sometimes I'm just not on. Um, but join the Discord if you haven't already. At 600 members, 10k crown code giveaway. At 600 members, invite your friends and whatnot. And if you're in the Discord, feel free to DM me if you need a pet morph. And I will try to get you a pet morph with one of my pets. And, uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know, uh, did I forget a piece of gear? I probably did. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know. And uh, oh, I almost forgot to show my powers list for Privateer. This is the powers list for my Privateer. Actually, these should probably be moved up a little bit. All right, there you go. So um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm tired. I'm going to go take a nap now. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching um, this long overdue video. And uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Again, thank you guys so much for 1.5k on YouTube and 1.4k on Twitch. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And yeah, um, that's it for the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.